Welcome back to my series on having a narc free new year. And for those of you who don't know, it's where I'm reading excerpts out of my book, Healing from Narcissistic Abuse, Recover from Empathy Deficient Relationships and Emotionally Unavailable People. If you want the links for it, it is going to be down below. And also if you missed other videos in this series, I will have them at the tail end of this video so you can just click on through. With that said, let's get on with it. Page 71 seek out shared risk through shared vulnerability. The most healing response to attachment trauma is to ask yourself, who or what are you attaching to? And if it's a person, do they wanna be attached to you? The most healing response is to become more discriminating about who or what you attach to. Remember, the narcissist indiscriminately does not attach. The codependent indiscriminately attaches. Both are unhealthy extremes. The healthy balance here is to discriminate who or what you are attached to and make sure that he or she is also just as attached to you as you are to them. In this way, we can better ensure that a relationship is interdependent. And there's a saying from Mark Twain, which I so love. Um, it is never allow someone to be your priority while allowing yourself to be their option. We're taught that dependency is bad, but no, it's not. Not when it's balanced, not when it's mutual and reciprocal for healthy reasons. When the dependency gets out of balance because one is taking more than the other person is giving, then there's a lack of reciprocation. And that's when dependency becomes unhealthy. So how do you find balance? The goal here, as I've said before, is interdependency. I've heard some narcissists explain that relationships aren't always 50-50, seems fair. Um, sometimes maybe they're 60-40 or 40-60, but here's the question. How often is it out of balance? How often is the lack of balance in your favor versus theirs? When it gets out of balance, what's done to restore the balance to the less favored party that is? And are win-win solutions being found or is someone winning at the other person's expense consistently or more times than not? Is this a pattern? Is this something happening repeatedly, basically? Because if the latter is true, then both parties are ultimately losing. And that's because this is not an interdependent union. It's codependent. I think the goal is to look for secure attachments where each person has a positive view of themselves and others for grounded and well-founded reasons. They have a positive sense of individuality while at the same time, positive connection with others. It's not because people are perfect or projecting some kind of ideal image. It's because there's authenticity and acceptance for one another, flaws and all. <laughs> They're comfortable with the emotional intimacy and bonding so that trust can be solidly built and maintained. But what if you're dealing with a narcissist right now? What if you're living with them, working with them, or having to co-parent with them? We'll talk about that in the next chapter. If you're interested in purchasing this book, Healing from Narcissistic Abuse, Recover from Empathy Deficient Relationships and Emotionally Unavailable People, remember it is on Kindle ebook version. You can get it on audiobook at Audible, and you can also get it in print at amazon.com and for those of you who like to sit back and watch and listen well i've got the video version over at my etsy shop links for all of these are going to be found down below and if you want to watch the next video available on narcissism click here thank you all for your support